Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Advanced Warfare in Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the RW1 One Shot Rail Pistol. This is my favorite secondary weapon in the game, a fun weapon, and the gameplay that you're going to be seeing is a little bit all over the place because I'm using it with good attachments and with some of the goofier optical attachments, and most of it was captured with a group of fans on the other team hunting me down as hard as they possibly could, which is always a struggle, but the gameplay is not the thing about in depth. We're here for stats, numbers, and analysis, so let's start off with the damage. It's got a very unique damage going to be talking about it a lot. It has three different distinct damage ranges. Up close, it'll deal 98 damage per shot. A little bit further away, it'll decrease to 70 damage per shot, and its absolute maximum range, which is actually quite far, it'll decrease to 45 damage a shot. So it's entirely possible that you could have to shoot somebody three times to kill them. However, you get a lot of one-shot kills, and that's because it has body multipliers just like sniper rifles. So I'm going to bring my uh, body double back from the sniper rifle episodes. These are the areas where you get one-shot kills at close range and in this instance where close range is up to 15 meters you have multipliers that will guarantee you one shot kills to the head neck upper chest and lower torso tummy region down there to about the groin or gonads those are all one shot kills in relatively close quarters combat however after 15 meters it'll decrease to only the head and neck so there's a very definite sweet spot where this gun will hit very hard and do good work and then it'll fall off to almost useless however some of the variants have increases to the damage now that does not increase the flat damage it's not going to get any higher than 98 but it does change the body multipliers after 15 meters the one shot kill areas will look like this if you have some of the selected variants you'll get the head the neck and the upper chest nothing on the lower stomach or gonad region down there but it'll work for the prototype the typhoon the tempest the tempest the xeno and of course for the rail driver which is the big heavy hitter in the group now the rail driver has actually higher damage multipliers and it'll deal more damage to that lower region down there but unfortunately it's not enough to guarantee you a kill it just i don't know if they're weak or something it'll it'll kill them if, they, if I don't know if they're just if they've been hurt or flashed or shot or something you'll get more at the rail driver but all of these have the same one shot kill areas after 15 meters in my experience, you're going to get a lot of one-shot kills with this pistol if you stay close quarters. Uh, a little bit further away, it's a lot shakier. You're a lot more likely to hit arms and legs or shoulders and not necessarily the body and the meat that you need to be hitting. You'll get them at long ranges. Sometimes you'll get some lucky picks, but it's mostly a close quarters combat weapon. Rate of fire is extremely slow at 35 rounds per minute, and you have to reload after each and every single shot. That would pretty much make this the slowest firing weapon in Advanced Warfare and one of the slowest firing ones in Call of Duty history, but that's done to make it fair and balanced. If it were one-shot kills and fired quickly, then it would just be completely broken and OP. It's a high-risk, high-reward weapon, and you're going to have to wait almost two seconds after each shot. The recoil is moderate to high, but because it takes so long to reload and, you know, recenter, I mean, to reload and get your next shot ready, it's almost always going to recenter before the next shot, so you're pretty much always going to have time to line up each and every shot but the individual shot may kick a lot and kind of throw you off if you're going for a long range pick and I strongly prefer the iron sights or the red dot sight on this one the iron sights are actually quite good they're clear especially for close quarters combat you can see what you're aiming at you don't zoom in too much you've got a nice peripheral vision going on and you can pop people pretty good red dot sight is also an excellent one for this one if you want a little bit more precision uh, precision but I don't run it quite as much the goofier sights the long range optics the thermal the tracker sight the all the all the ACOG what's that other nonsense they have like a mini sniper rifle sight you can put on that all of these long range optics are for something completely different these if you are for if you want to have a pocket sniper rifle for hardcore this gun will one shot anybody in any location and usually through walls at any range in hardcore so if you want to back up sniper rifle but you don't want to run overkill use this one use the long range sniper scope you can actually steady it and it can become a pocket sniper rifle in hardcore and be very very deadly if you need it although in hardcore all loves a ton of things that one shot kills so it might not be the most practical option the hip fire is very poor let's come on it would be it would be broken if the hip fire were easy yes you can run up in people's face yes you can spam it a little bit and get lucky but generally speaking you're not going to be able to do that very well I mean, especially not at any kind of range other than just like point and blank run speed is 100 percent thankfully it would be pretty miserable if it were any slower than that it's a pistol it's a lightweight weapon so that's not something that you should be surprised by the best variants are actually quite a lot Lot of the variants there are, there are a lot of the ones you saw on the damage chart and a few extras i think the rail driver the typhoon the tempest and the xeno are excellent variants 
Now the first three, the Rail Driver, the Typhoon, and the Tempest, they all get increases to the amount, the, to the areas that you can one-shot kill at longer ranges, which is good. The Xeno also has that, but its overall range is scaled back just a little bit. Hey, Boomy, don't scratch me, buddy. I'm doing commentary. You're a good boy, but we're talking about variants right now. And lastly, the Marksman variant, the Spitfire, that you get for 300 kills, you don't get any bonuses to your one-shot kill areas. However, your hip fire is tighter, which is good when you're in a pinch, and the overall range is extended so it's almost like getting free advanced rifling and if you throw advanced rifling on there again it stacks and even though like I said no bonus one shot kill areas for the Spitfire but you do get extra range which is very very nice and helpful. As for what I think about this weapon, I think that this is the best secondary weapon in Advanced Warfare, hands down, and it's one of the best weapons in Call of Duty history. This is an excellent sidearm, and when it comes to, I don't run a lot of sidearms, often I'm doing guns for in-depth, I'm trying to maximize my class or whatever, but when I build a few of my classes, I actually have this one, because this one is awesome to draw. When you run out of ammo instead of reloading, you can draw this pistol super fast and drop somebody in one shot, especially if they've already taken a hit or two. It is a very, very powerful weapon. And I honestly really like it. I would highly recommend it to anybody. Sometimes I just run it so low when I want to. And uh, as for the recommended attachments and perks, I think that is by far the best with advanced rifling and iron sights. If you have the extra perks, if you want to run underkill or you know you put more attachments on there, advanced rifling and tactical knife is also very good. Tac knife is just kind of good in general because oftentimes you, when you use this, you want to be close to people. You kind of want to be in range where you could punch them. And the melee is quite good in this game, but that tactical knife just makes it so fast and so nasty, and you can follow up. Uh, it's really, really good with either one of these two, but if I had to pick one, it would be advanced rifling. Well, guys, that's all for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. The previous episode was on the Atlas 20mm sniper rifle, and the next episode we're going to be returning to more normal weapons without crazy body multipliers with the Atlas 45 pistol. Drifter out. Oh my god. Drifter, oh, thanks man. for making good videos. That gun oh, sucks. God, weird. You suck. Oh, you yeah, suck. You suck, Asker. Yeah, you. Oh, you You're suck. just jelly because you don't know how to use it. Ah, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I am a He's freaking right there. <laughs> He's right there. <laughs> He's right there. Uh... <laughs> Oh shit, that dude! Oh, he pumped. Oh my god, he dropped. He doesn't need to be good to... Taking the flag. Flag secured. Okay, maybe not rack him, but we will... Fuck off, biznatch. Knock it off! Go ahead!